Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to a special draft here on the channel. Today, we are going to be playing Ikoria Draft. It's back on MTG Arena. It's one of my favorite formats, so we are going to be diving in. If you enjoy this sort of video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe for more, and comment with your questions, thoughts, and feedback. I already have an Ikoria Draft guide, tons of drafts of this format on my channel already from when it was out originally. I love this format. Okay, we have... Uh, I have all the old kind of cool arts for this one. This is Huntmaster Liger. Not a card you really need to prioritize. Not one of the better mutate cards. The Mythos of Nithroi was decent, but uh, not like crazy powerful. Boneyard Lurker is quite good. The fact that it has flexible mana means that you can often play this card uh, in green decks or black decks. So definitely a card to consider here. But it, Day Squad Marshal definitely performs well. And then these like one mana cyclers... Uh, these cards are all just generically quite strong because the cycling deck is quite good. Prickly Marmoset is a nice payoff for the cycling deck. I think I'm going to lean towards the Boneyard Lurker, though. I think this card is quite good, quite flexible. It's the sort of deck that I like drafting and overall feel good, because, especially because it's flexible. So you might think this is a black-green card, but because you're mutating it, it's really a black or green card, which is even more flexible. Um, so you don't need to be both colors to make it work. And the fixing is really good in this set. Marmoset might have been my second pick out of that pack. Okie doke. So following up Boneyard Lurker, there's General's Enforcer, which is a good card, just as a 2-mana two 2-3 two, that sometimes makes some 1-1s. One, one. So you don't need to be much better than that. That's pretty solid. Uh, but I'm not going to take that here. I think it's just a little bit too committal. I think instead I might take Blood Curdle, just a really good removal spell uh, that also buffs one of your creatures at instant speed. This is just a nice card in the format. Gust of Wind is also pretty reasonable. Glimmer Bell is good in the mutate decks because it gives you something with good abilities to mutate onto. Um, this card wasn't particularly great. This card wasn't particularly great. The lands were good in certain decks, but I don't think that we need to take them here. But I'm pretty happy taking Blood Curdle. I could still just be a black-green deck. I could just be a black deck, but I now have two cards that are essentially a black card because this is a mutate card that can be used for hybrid mana. Prioritizing flexibility early in a draft is generally quite good. Honey Mammoth, one of the best green commons in this set. It might not look it, but life gain is really important in this set to combat some of the aggro decks, specifically the cycling decks, and Honey Mammoth is a really good top-end card as a result. That four life really does make a monumental difference. I don't think Serrated Scorpion is particularly playable. Uh, Excavation Mole is deeply medium, not like a huge priority, though it does play well with the Lurker. Cunning Nightbonder, again, has that hybrid mana, so it does have that little bit of flexibility built in. But I don't think it's like a huge, like it's more the sort of card you'll get late in your blue-black decks because there is a minor flash theme, but not even a huge one. I think I'm just going to take Honey Mammoth here over Prickly Marmoset. Marmoset's fine. I mean, Marmoset's actively good in some decks, but uh, not a card I want to take here. The, the Trium is also fine, but I think Marmoset would be my second pick out of this pack. This is the second time that I've taken like a green card or a green-black card over a Marmoset, but I don't really regret it. Okay, now we see Boot Nipper, which is a nice addition to black green decks. Good to mutate onto. The lifelink can be good in certain matchups. The death touch can be good. Um, this card I didn't really like because if you top deck it, it can't always kill what you want to kill. Um, but if you have a big thing in your hand, you can sometimes play this. Humble Naturalist can be pretty nice. But the thing about mutate, so like, let's just look at this. Um, you can't put it onto a human. So like having Humble Naturalist can be a pretty big liability. I don't love the crystals. They're like very minorly playable. Thieving Otter can be good. Facet Reader can be pretty decent, like as a one of sometimes. Fully Grown's not the best. I think I'm going to take the Boot Nipper here, though. I already have the Blood Curdle, the Boneyard Lurker, the, the. So I could just be playing a black deck. I could be a blue black deck still. Thieving Otter can still fit that. I don't. I'm not committed to green, but green is looking open. And now there's a Dreamtail Heron, which is a card that I certainly like. There's also Cavern Whisperer. I think I like Dreamtail Heron a little bit better uh, because it mutates to draw cards and this one mutates to discard cards. Uh, this also gives better ability with flying. I think these cool artworks are cool. I know they might be confusing for people that haven't played the set though. Uh, neutralize. Like we could still be just a blue deck. We don't see any green cards in this pack. All bite. It is a bit later in the pack. Cavern Whisperer is good when you're mutating it on. Um, I would generally rather have the Dreamtail Heron though. So I think I'm going to take the Heron. Um, hmm. 
even though Whisper is more likely to make my deck. I just don't find the Menace to be as relevant as the Flying a lot of the time in my Mutate stacks. And I'd rather draw my own cards than force them to discard cards. Yeah, I almost, I kind of changed my mind at the end there. I don't think it really, I think it's a really close pick though. Here, there's an easy prey. This is definitely a nice pickup here. Mystic Subduel is also way better than it looks. Um, this card just like totally shuts down certain strategies. Um, yeah. The thing I remember about the 4-4 about the Mutator is that I never really actively pursued it, whereas I really liked having Dreamtail Herons. And it looks like Blue Black might be the most open. Mystic Subduel is actually really good. Um, I think Easy Prey actually might be worse than Mystic Subduel. I'm just going to take the Mystic Subduel. This card's quite good. I think it's better because it just gets rid of the threats you care about. Yes! Oh my gosh. Archipelago is my favorite card in the set. Um, Yorion is a rare that comes close, but this is my favorite card in the set. And I feel so good about my decision to move into blue. Uh, blue, black, mutate can definitely be a thing, I think, for me here. If I get enough fixing, I could even just go straight soul tie, but I'm feeling really good. Pack, pick seven, Archipelago should not happen. This card is fantastic. There's also B Bushmeat Poacher, which is a really good card as well, but I'm really happy to see this. This card's also solid in the blue-black flash deck especially, but Archipelago is excellent. Okay, now there's a blue-red land. There's also a back for more. That could be a pickup. Bushmeat Poacher is pretty reasonable. Frost Lynx is decent. Swiftwater Cliffs if I wanted to splash red. I'd be much more likely to want to splash um, a back for more, I think, though. This card can do some work. I think Bushmeat Poacher is really good too, though. Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to take back for more, though. I don't like this card. Not a huge fan of this guy either, but Thwart the Enemy is not very good. Sometimes you can mutate onto this. I don't generally like it, though. I don't like this card at all, though. I don't think green was particularly open. I guess I'm wheeling the only green card from this pack. I'm feeling good about my Dream Tail Heron pick. Now that I have the Archipelago and the Mystics of Duel. Blue is looking pretty good. I've got some black cards or some green cards. I could just be blue green splashing black for the Blood Curdle. I mean, the Boot Nipper is pretty good too. Um, Honey Mammoth is great as a top end card. This is definitely a splashable card. Really good with Honey Mammoth. Yeah, Archipelago is just excellent. When it mutates, you tap up to X creatures, and they don't untap. So you just, like, hit them with your giant creature, trigger your mutate cards, lock down their whole board. It's really good. And now I'll take Facet Reader. You might be wondering, why not take Zagoth Crystal? It's really not the sort of card you want. Three mana, you can't afford to just make a mana rock, even if it is all my colors. Don't like Phase Dolphin. Don't like this either, though. Unexpected Fangs I could totally play, though. Sometimes you just need to gain some life in this format. Let's see what we get. Karuga! <laughs> this card is great. Um, you could just play it in your main deck. You don't really want to companion it, I don't think, after the rules change to companion. Um, especially because you, like, you really fall behind if you do put this card as a companion. And you miss out on a lot of good stuff. Essence Scatter's fine. Ominous Seas can be okay. This card's fine. Karuga's just good as a 5-drop, though, so we're going to take it. You just draw a lot of cards with it, naturally. I would maybe take Essence Scatter. Yeah. But this is pretty good. And now there is Gem Razor. This is another nice pickup. Uh, what else is in this pack? This card's good in the black-white decks, the red-black sacrifice decks. Um, we don't love this card because it deals damage to you, which is not what you want in this format. There can be some nice reach decks, but this card's really good. Gem Razor. Um, easy, cheap way to trigger mutate stuff. Also, like, just a big creature that has reach and trample. Pretty much just what the doctor ordered. So we're playing green, blue, splash black, maybe. I do love a Boneyard Lurker. Also think Gust of Wind is pretty good. This card's cute, but it's really hard to get to work. Um, I have played it before, though. Yeah, this card's good just because of cycling for one. But I do like this Boneyard Lurker. I have a lot of good Mutate cards here. 
You can also just play this as a green card if you want to. I'm playing Soul Tie Mutate, which is kind of like where my sweet spot was a lot of the time this form. I'm going to cut the cards that are bad. I don't like Corpse Churn. The slow one for one. Uh, what's my colors? I don't really like Excavation Wall either. Even though it's good with uh, Boneyard Lurker, so I could see it being worth it. So my colors, I've got a little bit of blue. So now there's a Blood Curdle. There's also a Jungle Hollow. Um, man, this card's not particularly good. This card was pretty good, though. This card was great. This is one of the best white commons because it has cycling, and it fits perfectly in the cycling deck. Blood Curdle or Jungle Hollow? I'm just going to take Blood Curdle. I don't necessarily need to splash. Um, Bush Meat Poacher. And also, you just want to have your good removal spells. This isn't one of those formats where it's like every card is perfect. Like, there's four mana 1-6s, and 1 mana 1-2s. Like, there are unplayable like cards that aren't very good. Um... And so just getting good ones. I like having one bush meat poacher though. So I'm kind of back towards playing the black green deck. Ooh, I love Parcel Beast. This card's excellent. Excellent card. Just draws you a bunch of extra cards. Cheap to mutate. Memory Leak is good just because it has cycling for one. Primal Empathy. Totally reasonable to play like one of sometimes. It's looking more and more likely that I'm just going to be playing three colors. So maybe I need to take the, the other card more highly. Oh my gosh, this card's sweet. Monocolored cards. I can get a Honey, honey Mammoth. Um, uh, an Archipelago. I'm not going to be able to cast this, I don't think. So I could take a Skull Prophet and just commit to the Blue Splash. I mean, nothing ventured, nothing gained. We still have a whole pack. We're going to do it. I love this. this is so it's one of the four th cool things you can do in this format is play things like Emergent Ultimatum. So I really want to show that off, even if it might not be perfectly optimal in all situations. Turn a human, return a non-human. Trap. Um, this card's not very good. I'll take it, though. I think it's the best of the options here. Kind of wishing I'd taken the other card now. Omnices is fine. But I like the Honey Mammoth here. Whisper Squad, even if I got a couple, wouldn't be the perfect fit for this deck anyway. Kind of wishing I'd taken the Jungle Hollow now, now that I have the Emergent Ultimatum. Kind of wishing that was the play. I might just play 18 lands, go full Karuga. <laughs> just not play any cheap cards. Okay... I also kind of wish I had taken the crystal thing at one point now. Three or less. Spinnerets is fine sometimes. This card's good in some decks, but not my deck. Fangs or Pterodon. Having a hexproof thing to mutate onto is pretty good. I'm going to take Pterodon, though. Now there's a Blitz Leech. Okay. Okay, I love me an Essence Symbiote. Chittering Harvester. Mutates each opponent, sacks a creature. Pretty good. This card's also good. Hmm. Do I want a Companion this? I don't think I do. I think I'm playing Black Green and then kind of dipping into blue for my splashes. Garuda's incredible. I might just abandon this Emergent Ultimatum play and play Garuda. If you play this in Mill of Honey Mammoth, you just win. I mean, the fact that I have to take this over f f 
Barfinder, which would be the perfect card for my deck, and Dismal Backwater, just for power level reasons, is why I'm going to do this one. And probably just abandon the Emergent Ultimatum plan. Because these are the exact sorts of fixing I would need to prioritize. We're not going to get there. We might not even play any blue cards. Might just be a straight green-black deck. He says as he immediately considers taking another card. Maybe I will take Zagoth Crystal now. There's also Essence Scatter. Yeah, this is so tricky. Take the land. <laughs> Our strategy's back on the menu. Okay, I already have the Archipelago. I, I'm that I'm not going to be able to play if I don't take the lands here. Deadweight is so good. Just what my deck needs, too. I have so many expensive creatures. Well, I'm not going to splash the Wingfold Pterodon. This card's good, though. So I will have one cut to make here because this is 23 and I do want to make sure I play 22. It's because I, I can play 18 lands. I really want to show this card off. It's so sweet when it works out. Also, Dirut is quite cool. I have to make a few cuts. Hmm. Maybe I cut the fangs. How many creatures do I have? 16. Wilt is a card you can main deck because of cycling. Oh, if only I could get a Dismal Backwater. Oh, I should have taken that Jungle Hall of that one pack. I forget what I took over it. I think I took Blood Curdle or something. So I don't really regret it. It just feels bad. Um... Yeah, I think this is going to be the deck. I do, but I need to make a couple more cuts. Bushmeat Poacher might get the axe. Unexpected Fangs might get the axe. Because I don't really have Sack Fodder. I could cut Wilt. Play 18 lands from here. 18 lands plus a Zagoth Crystal might be a lot, but. Hmm. This card can be cute. Or maybe I play 17 lands, Wilt, Zagoth Crystal. So I didn't get the most fixing. I definitely could have taken, like, I don't know. I think I, dra I dra I'm pretty happy with how I drafted this. The Emergent Ultimatum pick is definitely not optimal, but it's really fun and I wanted to show it off because it's the sort of thing you can do in Ikoria, and it's a pretty unique Ikoria type thing. I have plenty of card advantage thanks to my mutate stacks. Um, I just need to make sure I have enough creatures to mutate onto. I'm going to have to probably base level play some uh, of the mutators just as their front sides.
Oh, Mystic Subdual, I almost forgot I had that card. Um, so this is 15 creatures, so I have to cut. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, six drops. It's a lot. Huh, did this game glitch out or something? Weird. But uh, I can still just make my deck building decisions here. I want as many two drops as I can get here. I like all these cards. Karuga's pretty good here. I could cut the Blitz Leech. Six mana, six, five, two. I already have some other removal spells. I don't think I need this card. I already have a lot of expensive guys. I think my general emergent ultimatum stack is going to be Honey Mammoth. Things that are exactly one color, right? Honey Mammoth, Archipelago, or Blood Curdle. Maybe uh, the Gem Razor and the Dreamtail Heron get in there. Hmm. Wingfold, Wingfold Pterodon could be really good with all these mutators. How many mutators do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six mutators. Yeah, this could be good. Well, I will see if this issue is fixed and I'll see you in the games. Well, this is the final build for now. I will see you folks in the games. Before I get to the games, I want to give a huge shout out to all of the patrons who support the Nikolai Bolas channel at patreon.com slash Nikolai Bolas. Patrons are the ones who contribute directly towards the channel so that I will be able to make as many videos as I do. They gain access to some cool rewards in the process, like my tier list for each set and things like that. But fundamentally, Patreon is a place to support the content you enjoy so it can continue being made in the future. And for that, I am very grateful. I want to give a huge shout out to those who support at the credits level. It really makes a big difference. And without further ado, let's get to the games. Welcome to round one. We're going to keep this on the draw. We're going to do Mori deck, which means all creatures, pretty much. Hopefully we can draw a, a forest here to go symbiote into mutate this on it. That can really pressure a deck that only has creatures. The companions definitely got a lot worse in Limited when they changed the companion rule. They're still good, but yeah. Naturalist is a good start for a Numori deck. I will also play a Naturalist second. It's unlikely I'll be able to get the Symbiote Gem Razor combo going here anyway. So I might as well try to like hard cast the arm Armored Killer. We're not going to kill any artifacts or enchantments in there in Mori deck. Oh my gosh, I wish I had a Fertilid. That card is perfect for me. So we would have gotten there. Yeah, green has a decent amount of fixing in this set. I didn't see any of it to go with my ultimatum, unfortunately, but such is life. I probably shouldn't be playing the ultimatum. Yeah, I might go in and tweak my deck after this just to make it more solid. Because I think splashing things like Archipelago is reasonable, but kind of hard to get the ultimatum to work. It's only cost six to mutate. So you want to put it over because that'll make it a bigger creature. So if they play Umori this turn, I'll kill it with Blood Curdle. No reason not to attack.
Next turn, I'll mutate this on, and you'll see just how good it is. I almost killed them with this, because it'll be an 8. It'll be actually a 9-powered creature, because it'll have a second counter. And it'll tap down two of their blockers, and it has menace already. Oh, so now they're just dead. Perfect. This is why... I, oh, no, I can't, because I need the blue mana to cast this. Island? Nope. Okay. And I have Trample and Reach. And they can't really have removal. <laughs> because they're all creatures. So they have to add 5 Toughness and enough blockers to block the Naturalist and the Archipelagor. I love Archipelagor so much. Got the win. Nice. Huge. Easy peasy. <laughs> I'll keep the deck the same as it is for now. I'll see you folks next round. Welcome to round one. On the play, we can keep this Zagoth Crystal Hand. Hopefully I find some forests, and then I can cast the Ultimatum. Obviously, as I said, the Ultimatum's not really um, the perfect card, but you can play it. And I just wanted to highlight it, which is cause it's a cool thing you can do in the format. They're Whisper Squatting me. I'm a little bit color screwed right now, but that's okay. This solves all my problems for now. I just want to keep hitting land drops. That's why I'm running 18. Parcel Beast will help with that once I get that going. Black White's kind of a grindy token to humans deck a lot of the time. The Parcel Beast holds back all their guys, helps me hit lands. If I miss a land drop and lose a game as a result, I'm not really concerned about that. Okay, this is totally fine for me. I can still activate it every turn. Okay. Sure, I'll just get this dead weight out of my hand. When you're constrained on mana, you just want to play whatever you can. I've got an endless stream of card advantage. Oh, that's perfect for me to see. Put a coil bug in the graveyard. They drew a whisper squad. Sure. Am I far enough behind that I have to YOLO hit a land here? I think so. Their three cards could be something good. Play out my 4-4. Four, four. I'm actually one forest away from... Uh, I have black, black, blue, blue, green, green. Like, if I draw a forest, I can just slam Emergent Ultimatum. Okay. Okay, hit that. So I'm not technically dead on board. So if they don't have removal, I'm still alive for a turn. This has been kind of an awkward draw for me. 
So I'm dead to a combat trick, of course. Okay. Honey Mammoth. Back for me. So if I could guarantee a Honey Mammoth, I'd be alive still. I don't have any other life gain, unfortunately. I think I have to YOLO into a Honey Mammoth here. Because then I'll gain four. I know this isn't good enough. Maybe there's something I'm not thinking of in my deck. Oh, there is. Honey Mammoth, which they can't afford to give me, so they have to give me the other two. Then I can get Boot Nipper, which can gain Life Link. And... And if I get Boot Nipper and another creature... Boot Nipper can block here, this can block here, I'll gain two, and the other third creature can block there, and I'll live at one. And then I can get Excavation Mole so that I can maybe mill a Honey Badger. I'm in such rough shape, but they didn't have a kill spell last turn. So I got five mana worth of spells, but that's only because it's a very specialized situation. So next, I just need to survive one more turn. And this is giving me an opportunity. I blow block, block, block. Okay. They whiffed? No, they hit a honey honey bit. They hit a honey mammoth for me. Eat this. Eat there, live at one. Oh my gosh, this is so close. So what I need to do is six, seven, eight. So I can play back for more and Mystic Ghoul. I'm totally back in this game if they don't interact with my board in a significant way here. Because remember, this is recursion. I'm definitely going to want to ice that guy.
Oh, okay. They have a durable coil bug. Do they have one left? Nope. I think I've stabilized. So I have to double block here. Because I can't just afford to keep jumping, which means I do lose my value mutate stack. But... I get my honey mammoth and I can start beating down. And I'm drawing an extra card every turn with a parcel beast. Oh, this is going to be so good for me. Doesn't really matter, I'll put it under. Oh my gosh, I've totally got him. I'm just gonna not use this because I just need to make sure I have enough turns to win now. This game is firmly under my control. I don't even want the Dream Tail, really. Other than that, it lets me, like, rebuy my entire graveyard. Sure. This is so sweet. What a comeback. So I get back two creatures. Back up to 20. I have seven cards left. I can just hit them with these guys every turn. Sure, they can block Sack with their Bushmeat Poachers and gain some life back and stuff. I can also make a flyer with this. I can also get back Gairuda and mill both of us for four at some point if they draw too many cards. What a game. I can't believe we got there here. I'm just going to go for this so I have a flying attacker so I can end the game. This is a death toucher. Hold my dead weight for now. Yep, they're going to be doing their coil bug shenanigans. That's why I had to make this guy an attacker for me. I think I have both of my removal. I have one blood curdle at least left.
They need a kill spell for my mutate stack this turn, I think. Cycling, sure. That would deck me. Take out the coil bug, make them tap their bush meat poacher if they want to sacrifice it. Go there, chump chump. I like attacking with everything's correct here. I only have four cards left. This card definitely kills me. So I have four, five, six, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Do they have an answer to the Lurker? Doesn't look like it. Oh, yes! We complete the epic comeback. Oh my gosh. Yes. What a win. Oh, that was so thrilling. Oh my gosh, we were at one. We had to ultimatum for a three drop and a two drop to get the job done. I think Archipelagor was still in our deck, actually. That's actually funny. Nice. What a win. Welcome. On the play, sketchy hand, just what I like. Uh, we got our humble naturalist going. Gosh, that last game makes the entire draft worth it. Even if I lost these next three rounds, just like the thrill of that, that game was so good. Sure. That sort of guy, guy tends to be good against mutate stacks. Well, there goes the ultimatum. Only one land in that mix, though. I can hair it onto this guy, get a another lurker back. Two lurkers is such a good combo because they can get back the other lurker and just keep forming devastating loops. And this can return any permanent, so I can get a land with this. Still gonna get the other Lurker, it's way safer, and this game doesn't look like it's gonna end anytime soon. <sighs> Next turn I can play Crystal into Symbiote, if, even if I don't hit a land. I don't want to just hit a land so I can play Karuga. Draw two cards. Karuga's really good with the crystal, too. This would actually be an okay turn to draw a tap land. I 
as you saw last game, I'm not really worried about this matchup because I just go so over the top of them. It's cool because I've played a, a Corey enough to kind of know how the matchups play out for like when I'm playing my mutate decks because I play mutate decks a lot more than other people. And so it's kind of like, oh, this is kind of how this matchup goes. Vulpa Keith. Okay, sure, they get a counter. It's not the end of the world. Perfect. Tap. Like, drawing a land is great there. This will ensure that I can play Mammoth or Archipelago next turn. Pass back. I'm just going to draw so many cards with my Karuga. Yeah, they can do what they want with Checkpoint Officer. I'm just going to play a couple of Honey Mammoths, get myself some nice attackers. Yeah, this card I think is terrible. There are some matchups where it just loses you the game to have this card, and the upside in this sort of matchup is not worth it, I don't think. I don't want to go for this into open mana, because I really want to make sure I get this mutate going. I'm just going to play Karuka, draw one, two, three, four cards. This card's only got a home in green-white Vigilance, I think. I don't really like that card. Sure. They buff up their whole team. Five, eight, yeah, I don't need to block. Six, ten, six, eight, eleven, fifteen, yeah, I don't know what they're doing. So if I put it on my smallest guy, this is lethal, right? Tap their Vigilance guy. This is 6, 8, 6, 14. Yeah, they're multi, multi-dead. Archipelago is great. That attack was incredibly ambitious. Huh. Yeah. Even if they didn't have a blocker, like, were they just dead on board anyway? I mean, pretty good. Maybe they had another mutator they were trying to kill me in two turns. I don't know. Still, good win. Welcome to another round. My opponent's on a mulligan. I'm going to keep, of course. Another fun fact about Ikoria is it's the only set that I have a complete collection of on Arena. Like, the little collection icon is 100% for this one, which is very cool. Okay, I've got my ultimatum mana. Ultimatum's just going to get me, like, 10 mana worth of spells a lot of the time. I've got pretty much everything I need. As soon as I get to 7 mana, I can slam this pretty much. No need to walk into anything crazy. I'll just play my mole next turn. They could have Essence Scatter, which is a pretty fair, commonly played card in this format. I don't mind if they can't excavation mole, get my excavation mole, though. I'm just setting up my Boneyard Lurker. Nice. Boneyard Lurker can get a land. Forest or Island, yeah. In case they tap this. Sure. Uh, not the end of the world. They can Essence Scatter this. I'm okay with that. Convolute, sure. I'm glad they did that instead of doing that on my Ultimatum next turn. Okay, so I'm going to get a Honey Mammoth, a Blood Curdle, and I think a Gem Razor. Because the Gem Razor plus these other guys can free up my Mole. I mean, Emergent Ultimatum has been pretty good when I'm cast. I mean, the first time it wasn't the best, but it did stabilize the game. It was a card that got me out of that situation. 
And here I'm just going to get a huge advantage. Either kill their guy and get a bunch of creatures, or just get a bunch of creatures. Okay, so they don't want me to kill their guy. So I get 10 mana worth of spells, which is pretty great. No matter what they do here, because I have another Boneyard Lurker, or I'm not another, because I have a Boneyard Lurker in my hand, they're not in great shape. Yep, ram through is pretty standard here. They only have one card in hand, so I'm not going to play around too much here. Boneyard Lurker is so good. Sure, I'll put this over. <laughs> One thing you can do is you just put the creature that is like more confusing abilities over. I mean, less like less uh, like so the gem razor has reach and trample. Do they have minarets? That'd be so funny if I got wrecked by minarets. Plus one, plus three. Oh. Mildly confusing choice, but you know, to each their own. Ugh. Wow, they drew another ram through. Sure. Pretty good. I'm going to save this to do it next turn and tap down two things. They have not drawn a land in a while. They just keep ripping spells. Okay. Actually, let's play this first. Okay, so I hit their parcel piece. Nice. Gotta be said, whiffing on my direct deck, not the best, but such is life. Still got a 6-6 six, six and a 2-4 that draws me cards. Oh my gosh, Ikoria is so much fun. I love this format. It's like my, I think it's my favorite format on Arena. Okay, they gain a couple life. Not that it matters. They draw a card. Did they find the answer? It's a blocker. Perfect. Got the kill spell that we needed. Ooh, nice win again. Let's go.
Oh, my deck is so sweet. See you folks next round. Oh, I had so much fun. I love this set. I love this set. I love this set. Welcome. We're keeping. This hand has all my colors. It's not very good in terms of early game, but you can't just mulligan hands just because they have no early game. This format's not, like, blazing fast. There is the cycling deck, which we haven't faced, but, like, people vastly, vastly overestimate how much of a percentage of the format the cycling deck was. Okay, against green black, I'd rather get death touch here, I think. Ooh, they're just playing in Wari. Nice. Okay. So their stuff's going to be a little cheaper. The Sultai Mirror. I go Karuga into Jairuda. I much I don't really like this artwork. I probably should have just stuck with a different one. Cause this one's like not really easy, commonly found. Okay. It's a weird choice because any mutate card lets me go off, so to speak. Oh, okay, that's why they went that's why they do that for? Okay. Play this, I can trade there, I draw a card. Just wait until this hits two creatures. I don't even remember how I got this artwork. The other ones I remember getting because I really liked them. It was cool because I had like all of the unique mutate arts. Like this one, I think it just gave it to me and I don't didn't know how to swap it out or whatever. Also, like, if they keep doing this, my Boneyard Lurker is going to do stuff. They also have Karuga. Sure. They're missing land drops. The Coil Bug into play. Just so they don't get access to it. I could have put this into play. That would have maybe been better. Yeah, I should have put the Symbiote in. Actually, no, the Symbiote's fine in my graveyard because I can get it back with my Lurker. They can cast Karuga. Yep, draw two. The Ozolith? What? That's just strange. I will kill it anyway, though. Get back Karuga, I think. Maybe I should have gotten back the Essence Symbiote. Because if they kill my Gigan, I am so toasted. I block five and I take four, six, seven. Thieving auto. That's not going to do it. Okay, I'm fine discarding a card. Next, I'm going to cast Karuga. I'm not going to need lands.
sure. They seem to forget this is a gem razor. Or maybe they do remember and can't do anything about that. I think I will get the crystal and the um, symbiote this time. Sure. Easy money. So now I can cast an ultimatum. I have Mystics of Duel up. I am having a blast. This is such a sweet deck. Oh, normally would be a problem, but I think that doesn't do what they need it to. This is three, four, five, six. 10. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ooh. I don't think Mystical Subdual supersedes counters. I'm not sure 100%, but I'm pretty sure. Like, when it loses all abilities, I think if it has a reach counter, it'll stay with reach. Um, but yeah, I'll see you folks next round. Welcome. Now, this is a hand I will mulligan because it doesn't have my colors. Also, rules clarification, Mystic Subduel will remove the counters as long as the counter was on the card before the Mystic Subduel was played because of the way stacking works. Oh, this hand's great. Uh, I will keep... It all except, I guess the subdual's gone. It's a tough one, but I think it's the right call. I love subdual though. Immediate regret, should have got rid of a land. That's no, fine. Okay, I'm against the cycling deck finally. Okay, so you'll get to see it in action now. The cycling deck is really strong. Um, this is a really good payoff for it, and I'm going to lose badly to it. To be fair, my, my curve is not very good right now. But basically, the cycling deck is quite strong. And uh, if you have early interaction, that's really the best way to beat it. Um, my, my my hand here was on a... Mul my, my worst... Uh, this was my worst hand of the draft so far. And also, I'm against a pretty decent start. I could have cycled this. Okay, that's a huge draw. Absolutely massive draw to keep me in the game here. Like sometimes the cycling deck's real problem is if you kill its creatures. Because then it does then it's like cycling a bunch of things for not a lot of value. Like imagine if I had had this dead weight right off the bat. It would have had like a bunch of these cycling cards that weren't doing much. Or if I'd kept the Mystics of Duel. It might have been correct to keep the Mystics of Duel just because of the cycling matchup. Like, when they're cycling cards and not getting value out of them, it's so much easier to win. And Honey Mammoth is also really good against them. Definitely going to play this guy. Just get him out in the field. Like, big, chonky creatures are sometimes just good against them, too. Yep. 
This isn't the best card in cycling, but it can definitely do work. This card's fantastic in cycling. Draw two. This is going to be good. So I'm going to let Karuga trade off with this guy and then back the more to kill the Dranith Stinger. And then hopefully this will gain me enough life to get out of their danger range. I doubt that they're splashing blue for a counter spell. Okay, that's definitely a card. First strike. Okay, that's so easy to kill though. Play this, and then play this as a lifelinker. Because you just want to get out of range of Zenith Flare. Which is, so they have one, one cycler, two cyclers, three cyclers, four cyclers, five cyclers, six cyclers. Okay. Okay. That's pretty good. I'm going to have to kill the Savai Thunder main then. You have to be willing to crack in for damage here. If I can trade this for all their guys, I'll be happy. Three, four, five, six, seven. So I can't play this and this, but I'll definitely play this next turn. Unless I draw a mutate card, which can get back a symbiote or a dead weight to kill this Dranus Stinger. They have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I just have to stay out of Zenith. Like, I'm constantly aware of Zenith Flare. Like, this is why Honey Mammoth is so good, because it gains me four life, which is like four cyclers. So they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten cyclers in their graveyard. Send in the gang. Nice. Go up to 14. This is not the card they want to see from me. Unless they have Essence Scatter. Okay, they're cycling. Gosh, I really just need to find, like... A, a mutate creature. They're just... They're, they probably have the Zenith Flare in hand, honestly. 6, 10, 15. Okay, so they might have to chump block here. Unless they're out of cyclers. Yes! Oh, that's how it's done. I did... <laughs> It's very, it's a very beatable deck, but the reason you're so afraid, there's a card called Zenith Flare, which is a four mana thing that does damage equal to the number of cyclers in their graveyard. And they have one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 cyclers in their graveyard. I did not have a good draw. I don't think, um, I didn't draw that. I drew, I didn't draw spells in the early game. And then I drew a lot of lands overall. I didn't draw a single mutator to go with my guy, but. Yes! That's the thing about the cycling deck, is it can run out of stuff to do if you don't have enough. My gosh. Yes! I think they should have still taken a draw step unless they don't have Zenith Flare in their deck. Because Zenith Flares are very contested, so if you don't have that, the cycling deck really struggles against this life gain that I had um, built up. Nice! Huge win. See you folks next round. Welcome to another round on the draw. Oh, uh, gosh. I don't have a green source. I think I have to mulligan this. I'm really happy we had that last game, though, because getting to play against Cycling really gets to show off what this format's about. I'm going to keep this. It's so bad, though. I'm just going to ditch. 
my only card I can cast. I'm going to get rid of the Mystic Subduel. I need. I don't have that many blue sources in the deck. Okay, I'm going to lose this game, though. I literally get rid of Mystic Subduel, the only card I can answer this with. Um, sometimes you lose, though. You just, like, have bad hands. Especially my deck has sketchy mana. Oh, yeah. But I'm glad we got to show off that matchup. Um, because it's, like, one that people are scared of. And they played a lot of the cards that you might be afraid of. Like, the Valiant guy. And... Oh, yeah, we are. A mega dead. These these foxes just take over the game. Oh, I do not know what they are doing. I don't know if I'm going to cast a spell this game, so I don't think it's going to matter. Yeah, two rough hands in a row here for me. I have early plays I could make. I just I'm not going to cast a single spell this entire game. Um, yep, that's game. Well, quick game. Luckily, it didn't waste my time that much. But yeah, I'm glad we got to show off a pretty like standard game against cycling and how you beat it. So yeah, see you folks next round. Welcome to another round. I'm going to keep this. I have a spell I can play. I've got back for more that I can draw eventually. They're playing Yorion, so it's a value matchup where you don't want a mulligan. Yorion is such a sweet card. It usually reduces the overall quality of your cards by a little bit, but it's so good. I'll keep Death Touch in this matchup. This is the sort of card that I will dead weight. That was a great time to draw that. Yorion decks can play extra lands because uh, Yorion requires so much mana to use and it's quite powerful. Okay, but you do have to play things like your your gory axe and stuff. Really just horrifically unfortunate on that one. Not a single creature to get back with my back for more. Though that just means that if I do draw land, though, that's less likely now that I've milled three lands, uh, that I will be able to get the Karuga back at some point. One thing you need to remember about older formats is there's not just value going everywhere. Okay, so they got all the colors. Um, there's not just like, oh, everything's a three for one. Like most cards, there's more incremental value. So like, oh, this is like bring back a creature, kill something. It's like a two for one. This is like going to draw me a lot of cards. It's a good, good value. Something like Yorion, where it's like a free extra creature. It's like really good. Like a lot of one for ones and then a couple little bit of value sometimes. So if you have like value in your deck, you like actually build towards winning with your value. The Mythos of Brokos is pretty good for them, especially because they uh, have such a large deck. Because Yorion makes them have an extra 20 cards in their deck. Capture Sphere. Okay. A little bit unfortunate potentially. Sure. I'm not going to go for the heartless act on their humble naturalist play. I am glad that I just made that decision. Cogla is a fantastic card. Well, this is definitely getting saved. They have a capture sphere in hand. Perfect. And I want to make sure this goes on top of the symbiote, even if in other lieu of other reasons, just because that means that it'll have a higher mana cost for this guy.
It is unfortunate that I milled three lands and then have not drawn another one. I've just so this is a really good draw, and I'm really happy to have it. Is this their Yorion turn? A land to play Karuga would be absolutely massive here. Rushwag is funny because you can like mutate onto it. They don't, they don't look like they have a lot of entries of battlefield effects here, though. Kind of a land. Kind of a land. They can only cast Yorion thanks to this Naturalist, which is hilarious. So they're splashing it in like... Maybe their deck has more blue than I think, but it's kind of funny. How little blue they have in play considering they have Yorion. The, the Gem Razor is so good. This card is fantastic. It even has reach. They're getting close to double brushwag activation, which is funny. Okay, sure. I don't know why they did that. I think giving it to the brushwag would have been way better later down the line. Give me some lands deck. Nice. I wonder if they'll remember that Yorion, that the Gem Razor has reach. I guess now that there's a giant bow icon on it, it's easier to remember. Sure. Good, good. Got rid of that. I'm going to back for more of the Karuga next turn. And probably fight the Brushwag or something. Maybe this. I'm not going to fall for this. And bringing back this guy to draw three cards is definitely better than the alternative of... Okay, nice. only one card that I really want back, which is the Karuga. I mean, I guess I want the Deadweight back right now. Okay, well, this is going to be good. So we'll try to hold back their attack one turn. This thing will be a five, a six, eight. And then it'll go down to being a four, six when I do this. Okay, yeah. We're going to do this now. Oh, 
Um, so Karuga could come in and fight this guy. Oh, because this will be up to 7 toughness, right? It'll be a 6-7, duh. And then Karuga can kill it, perfect. So they'll puff, buff it up, gain four life. I'll start hitting them for six in the air. I was hoping to draw this card, but that'll be fine anyway. I almost just kept stacking on it, but I felt like having two big threats to block that guy potentially was more prudent. They get rid of their Fertilid for another land? I guess they're thinning or something, but that's just not worth it, I don't think. You could easily chump block my Honey Mammoth and then do that. Maybe they want to triple activate Brushwag. I'm going to have to kill Brushwag. But their whole board is going to be tapped down for a long time. And if you want a few mutations, you have to like, click into it, but I have two mutations on this right now. I'm going to get back my Deadweight and kill this guy when I play my Archipelagor. Never mind. That's pretty good. I think I want to get back dead weight right now. Actually, no, I don't need dead weight. What am I doing? I'll just get back a land so I can keep deploying all my powerful spells. Yes! Conceding to Archipelago, or as the world should. Archipelago is such a beating. I love that card. It's so awesome. Yes! Max wins, 7-1. and one. We only lost that one game where we didn't cast a spell. This is Ikoria, the way it's meant to be played. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I love this format. I really do encourage you to try it out if you've never played it. I have plenty of videos just like this one where I go through my picks and plays to help you get better. I have a draft guide. I've got all the stuff you need to feel confident trying out this format. And I really do think it's a ton of fun. It's, it's like my favorite format on Arena, I think. Um, it's just awesome. I mean, just looking at our cards, like Archipelagor was awesome. The Honey Mammoths were so clutch for winning that game. We got to play Emergent Ultimatum in draft, which is like, how many sets can you do that in? Boneyard Lurker was definitely a card I was happy to first pick. Parcel Beast did some work in that one game where we really needed it to draw cards. Gem Razor was absolutely stellar. Um, this is what Jairuda's normal art looks like, by the way. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, look, you can see the little boat there. Oh my gosh. The mole to set up our Boneyard Lurkers was great. The Symbiote gained us a bunch of life. Using the Bone Nipper to attack and gain some life was good. Mystic Subduel was great. Deadweight was awesome. Our mana base worked out quite well. The Zagoth Crystal did some stuff. Overall, I loved this deck. I thought it was fantastic. And I was so happy I got to draft it and show off this format. I mean, obviously, Emergent Ultimatum should be our deck box art. That was so much fun. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, remember to hit the thumbs up button, subscribe for more, comment with your questions, thoughts, and feedback. And to let me know you made it all the way to the end of the video, leave hashtag Ikoria rocks in the comment section down below because this format rocks. We had an Ikoria Mana Rock, and uh, yeah, this one was fantastic. I had so much fun with it. I hope you enjoyed watching it, too. That's going to do it for this one, though. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will talk to you next time.